Hello all, let's get started here. So Chanika, over to you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the session on introduction on Google Gemma. I'm Chanmika. I'm an NLP developer in a US-based telecommunication company. So I majorly work on enterprise level NLP applications. And I have worked on various applications involving chatbots. And I have also productionized uh, state-of-the-art models starting from transformers and into recent Gen AI models like open source Llama and also Mixtril. Also, I have won a few of the global hackathons in my organization. So in today's webinar, we will do a deep dive into Google Gemma. We'll be uh, doing overview on the responsible AI implementations and also a quick review on the architecture of Gemma, which is being used in the Gemini model as well. So let's get started. Yeah. So the agenda for today's session would be a beginner friendly introduction to what is Gemma and what it is all about. And we'll start with a performance comparison among the multiple models available. And we'll see about the variants uh, that have been released with this uh, Gemma models. And also overview on the architecture and the components in it. And we'll quickly touch upon the training part of Gemma. And we'll have a code walkthrough and implementation. Yeah. So Gemma was released uh, by Google DeepMind. It's a lightweight model meaning it's a small la language model. So we have seen a lot of large language models and we have witnessed its power. So in that family, we now have a small language model, but it is still on par with the bigger large language models. So it's a lightweight model, but a state of the art open model. So by open model, they mean uh, all of the Gemini and the OpenAI models were to the enterprise or for a closed paid version, right? But this Gemma model is an open model available to all the researchers and developers. So this is a very big leap uh, from the DeepMind organization. And also, uh, even though it is a smaller language model, by comparing with the performance of the existing other state-of-the-art models, it has outperformed in most of the tasks starting with question answering, math, coding, and general reasoning, it is outperforming the state-of-the-art accuracies already. So with this open AI model, I mean open uh, model, uh, they are uh, expecting the researchers and developers to use it more uh, responsibly. Also from the Google end, they have implemented the responsible AI practices and made ensure that it has been developed in a safe and responsible way. And they have also released a responsible AI toolkit for uh, the developers to take it forward in a more safer way. So we'll explore more about uh, these in the upcoming slides. And also the important thing to note is uh, Gemma uses the same technology that Gemini is using. So the architecture, all of those are same with the Gemini models. So let's uh, see what is special about Gemma, right? We will try to decode the words that we saw in the previous slide. So when I mean lightweight, the number of parameters used are also light, uh, I mean smaller, and they belong to the small language models. So thus we have a faster inference time, right? So the inference time gets reduced and uh, we also have a very low resource uh, expectation. It's not a very resource intensive model. We can even run this Gemma on a CPU or even on mobile devices, we can run this Gemma model with a very uh, decent uh, results. So that is one of the main feature of Gemma. And also a big leap forward from DeepMind is they have made it uh, as an open model, right? So which uh, creates a lot of possibilities for customization. So we can fine tune these models for our own use cases. We can load our own data sets and fine tune it for uh, our specific needs. So they also have released a lot of uh, sample examples, including the latest uh, you know, PEFT methods like LoRa, like how to fine tune these Gemma models for our own data sets. We can leverage those Kaggle notebooks to uh, you know, uh, 
uh, develop for our own use case. So that is one major uh, you know, uh, leap from the DeepMind. And also uh, that it's, uh, it's more focused on responsible AI development, right? So uh, they are uh, starting from the data curation point and the training point and also with the evaluation point, they have ensured that all the responsible AI methodologies have been implemented. So we will see more on this in upcoming uh, slides. So uh, they have ensured that they have safely aligned to all the responsible AI practices and they have also uh, you know, released a lot of uh, responsible AI practices uh, for the developers. And during the evaluation, they have set a very high bar to evaluate these responsible AI areas. For example, for the safety, fairness, bias, for these kind of uh, areas, they have evaluated extensively and benchmarked against the metrics. And also, there is a Google Red team. So they are a set of uh, ethical hackers. So they have uh, in, uh, invested a lot of time to uh, evaluate this uh, Gemma models. So this red team has done a lot of uh, activities and they have ensured that it is completely safe and it is good to go from this uh, red team. So this is also one major uh, factor as it has been uh, uh, openly publicly available as an open model. Responsible AI practices also are uh, included in this. So there is a detailed blog about this. Uh, no, Chandrika, from, quick question yeah. here. So mm -hmm. are you saying this particular line of models yeah. uh, has gone through more responsible AI testing? compared to other LLM models which we have seen. So is there a special emphasis on responsible AI here? Or is no more or no less than all other LLMs we have seen so far? Yeah, so in the blog, they are not comparing our, against other uh, models. But for this, uh, since it's an open model, they have emphasized a lot on this responsible AI practice. Uh, starting from the training till evaluation, it is in uh, each and every step. Got it. So not only from the Google end, after they have released as open model as a developer, what we have to do, all those steps also they have given us, which we will see in the upcoming slides. Yeah, so to know more about its features, right? Uh, there is a detailed blog about it stating all of those. Yeah. So we'll uh, compare the performance of Gemma with uh, Llama models. So even though Gemma is a smaller model, it already outperforms in most of the tasks. If you compare with the Llama 2's uh, uh, scoring, right, it's it's uh, very much better, and they have higher uh, scoring. So in terms of math, in terms of coding, in all the aspects, Gemma has a upper stance. So from Google, they have uh, released this uh, released this evaluation metrics tool. So is it outperforming even Llama mm -hmm. 2? Yeah. Because Llama 2 is a full stack model, not a just a lightweight model from what I understand. Yes. I see. OK. True. Even on most of the aspects, it is outperforming Mixtral. Wow. OK. Yeah. So whichever model you want to compare, and if you have any specific, uh, this is Gamma two, yeah. uh, Gamma two B or like seven B. Which which model we are comparing right now? Because yeah, here um, yeah, this is Gemma seven B. Seven B. Oh. Yeah. So uh, Vivek, answer to that question is like two B is lightweight model, seven B is is still uh, not that lightweight compared to this. Right, right, got it. And Chandika, I believe this one is downloadable. Unlike the Google mm -hmm. Gemini, which is only available as an API, right? Exactly, yes. Okay. And and Chandrika, this 2B model runs on mobile app, right? And that is runs mm -hmm. on normal thing, not the 7B model, right? Yeah, 2B runs on uh, CPU mobile and 7B on the GPUs. Okay. Yep. So on any particular specific task, if you want to compare, we have uh, this UI available from uh, Google Dev. You can choose which uh, benchmarking uh, metric you want to uh, evaluate against. 
And for example, on this problem solving ability, if we compare Gemma with other models, it is on par with uh, Mistral. And comparing to Lama 2, it has a you know, higher uh, benchmarking score. Amazing. Because Mistral 7B, the latest mm -hmm. ones they are claiming in 7B, they outperform everybody else. Yeah. Except GPT, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, now you are saying Gamma is claiming they outperform Mistral. OK. Yes. So likewise, they have multiple uh, metrics, uh, like on terms of coding or general uh, reasoning, question answering. You can explore uh, this tool. So on summarizing all of these in the original Gemma paper, they have uh, released this comparison. They have taken Lama 2 7B and 13B uh, with Mistral 7B and Gemma 7B. So Gemma is in green. If we compare the results, Gemma is outperforming in math, science, and coding. And it is almost uh, equivalent or little higher than Mistral in question answering and reasoning. OK, interesting. So on this, we will uh, try to understand the difference between Gemini and Gemma, right? So both are from Google. But the, there are few uh, differences between both of these models. So the goal of Gemini model is uh, they are more focused on the enterprise grade. They wanted to uh, release the API and uh, you know for the uh, uh, task focused applications, they have developed that. But Gemma is mainly focused on the assisting the developers and the researchers to use it as an open model so that it opens a lot more other possibilities. And also, they are mainly focused on the responsible AI development with these open models. So this is the main uh, goal of Gemma and the similar models. And coming to multimodality, uh, Gemini handles text, images, videos. It can generate uh, images. But Gemma is trained only for text-to-text -text conversion. It, is, it handles only text. It generates only text. That is one major difference. And also, in terms of uh, multiple language support, Gemini uh, supports multiple languages. But Gemma supports only English. It is trained on English languages. And the tech output generation is also only English for now. And comparing to the size, Gemini is a large language model. Gemma falls under uh, short language models, smaller language model, when we compare the Gemma 2B variants. So as I mentioned, since Gemini is focused for enterprise uh, level applications, their main uh, focus task would be on very complex uh, uh, qualitative tasks. They are more into the results, and they are more into uh, handling very uh, you know, higher level of tasks. But Gemma is focusing on the general task, like text generation, summarization, code generation, like the uh, usual task that the developer would uh, require. And also in terms of uh, interoperability, Gemma is available as an API. We cannot download the models or access in our own environment. We have to uh, uh, do a paid version and access their API to get the response. But in Gemma, it is compatible and operable in multiple platforms. We can run it in Google Collab, Kaggle, or Vertex AI. In multiple platforms, it is supported. Or we can even run it locally without the connection. So these are the major uh, difference between Gemini and Gemma. So Gemma is focused for the developers and the research community with these many features. Let's uh, see upon the variants they have released with Gemma. So in Gemma, they have two type of categories, one on the pre-trained version and the next on the fine-tuned version. So pre-trained version is like they have trained for the usual English corpus, and it has learned the nuances of uh, the training data set. And the plain uh, basic uh, model they have released with the pre-trained uh, weight checkpoints. We have two variants in it, uh, Gemma 2B and Gemma 7B. But in the fine-tuned, uh, 
it is like for a specific task uh, they have fine tuned for example involving question answering or classification summarization comprising multiple uh, tasks they have fine tuned and released as instruct uh, models so for both 2b and 7b we have uh, gemma instruct and for the pre train we have uh, gemma 2b so uh, this has to come here so here we would have gemma 2b uh, english gemma 7b english and for the fine tune we have gemma instruct 2b english and gemma instruct 7b english so we will see a sample uh, result from both of these models so what do i mean by pre trained version and a fine tuned version so pre trained version it has been trained to understand about the training data to generate a text right for example when i ask a question like what's the most famous painting by uh, monet this is the output that we get right so this is not the response that we are expecting but this is the uh, core uh, capability of the model it is more focused on generating predicting the next sequence of tokens right but the same one if we try from the instruct models the same question it would be more on a question answering response so by reading this question it is generating the response that the most famous painting by monet is water lilies and so on so this is the difference based upon our use case uh, we have to choose which variant we want to use if uh, we want to fine tune for our specific use case we want uh, to make it more customizable we can take this uh, gemma model and fine tune for our own use case right but uh, straight away if we want to uh, you know use it for some uh, code generation or for question answering we can take these instruct models which have been already fine tuned for some instruction based prompts so this is the basic difference between both of these models um chandrika one question on this like uh, the first as you like i'm just repeating what you said uh, just to clear my understanding the gamma 2b is first one is for the summarization rather right not for questioning answering right yeah for the basic summarization we can use but it is more focused on generation like if i give a text the output would it would see what to generate next right but in instruction tuned it is looking for a question answering kind of thing it is thinking for this question what has to be my answer but in the previous one it is like what would be my next word generation it's not uh, tuned for any particular task okay okay uh, a second question on top of it does it actually the chain of thought is it also implemented in this does it follow up the question also and it provides the answer that way uh so in the paper they mention in the evaluation they are using a chain of thought prompting uh okay. during the supervised fine tuning process during the evaluation okay. Okay. on that particular thing they haven't mentioned and knowledge base as i mentioned because the chat gpt and all they have the huge knowledge base right yeah that is yeah. all like that's how it, how it performs so what about knowledge base did they mention like what knowledge base this model has yeah they haven't uh, explicitly said uh, what is the data set but they are giving some words on like they are uh, feeding some english based data sets from uh, you know uh, the textbooks some books so i'll cover upon those in the training part i will cover those sure thanks can you go back to previous slide yeah one before yeah so this one so uh, okay so for both 2b 7b there are two versions the yeah. instruct version is probably better on specialized tasks right and uh, i mean 7b will score over 2b any day and hmm. instruct version of the respective one will be better than the non instruct version correct yeah but is, is is instruct version for specific tasks only or it can work generally it can work generally so for multiple tasks like classification question answering all of those they have already trained but on top of that if we want to fine tune also we will we can do that also 7b is fine tuned hmm. and 2b is not fine tuned yeah fine tuned on what yeah i will i will show that in the training part i okay, have a small okay. screenshot got it okay sure. thanks
so with this base right like to i think by this you have basic understanding on uh, like what is uh, pre trained and what is fine trained pre trained is that it has just understood about the grammar and nuances of the language and its task is to keep on generating uh, the next sequence of tokens but in instruct uh, tuned based upon a specific task it has been already trained like for question answering on top of that we can customize so let's do a deeper uh, dive into the comparison between both the so starting from the uh, base difference between both of these in terms of the size basically so this is a, a lightweight champion right it's just 2 billion parameters and uh, it can even run in mobiles that's the major advantage of 2b but if our focus is on power and efficiency gemma 7b will be suitable it is more uh, uh, you know it has a higher advantage in terms of uh, performance and in terms of resource constraint if our use case is focused on cpus uh, or mobile devices to be uh, is suitable or if we if we can use the gpus or the tpus we can use 7b even for the inference we need uh, gpus and in terms of I'm inference yeah. sure for 7b you need gpu because for Lama two and Mistral seven B we have I think the inference works fine on 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 yeah. you know on CPU for a Lama two and Anthropic and Mistral the inference runs fine on CPU so here the seven B would would definitely need a GPU. Hmm. Uh, it runs even the Lama runs in CPU but it takes very uh, long time. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and also the RAM uh, requirement would differ uh, for both. Uh, I will uh, touch upon that as mm. well. But we can do. But if we are expecting, uh, you know, production level GPU supports uh, for the faster inference for 7B. And in terms of inference speed, 2B is super fast. And compared to uh, 7B, it's little fast. Uh, little, I mean, it's fast. But uh, on comparing both of these, 2B is uh, fast. And in terms of performance, the 2B models are realistic and they are context aware. They can give a decent uh, results. But on comparing 2B, it out, the Gemma 7B outperforms most of the LLMs like we saw. Even the Mistral, for most of the task, it has a upper advantage. So for the ideal task suitable for uh, Gemma 2B would be for the text classification and question answering. For these uh, level of complexities, to be uh, will be much suitable. When we come to much higher complex tasks like code generation and summarizing a super big uh, paragraph, Gemma Seven B would be more suitable. So, depending upon our requirement, we'll have to choose between the variants. So. Yeah, we will uh, do a touch upon the responsible AI factor of Gemma, which they are uh, mostly focusing on. So since uh, this is an open model and available to uh, all the researchers and developers, uh, they have uh, taken a lot of steps from their end also. But they are emphasizing that as a developer, we have to be more responsible in, in utilizing these. So starting with the training, right? Uh, so if you see here, uh, we'll come to this, uh, uh, you know, illustration later. But starting with uh, the training part, uh, they have used multiple filtering techniques to filter out harmful contents. They have a lot of uh, CSAM scoring metrics and a lot of other uh, scoring techniques to filter out any abusive or harmful content from the training data set. So they have set a very high evaluation bar for this. And they have carefully curated this uh, data set. So that's uh, one of the things they have done from their end. And also, when coming to the evaluation part, there are a lot of uh, data sets available publicly, which evaluates our model's performance and uh, the way it responds against these responsible AI practices. Is it against any particular community? Is it uh, following the safety and fairness uh, approaches? Is it falling under the proper content uh, generation policy? So a lot of evaluation and a lot of data sets they have evaluated and released this model. So they are also emphasizing uh, the developers to do it as well, right? 
so for that uh, what they are uh, suggesting for our developers is on the responsible ai toolkit guide so if i can go to it right yeah so this is the responsible gen uh, generative ai toolkit so they are mostly emphasizing on three things one on the safety policies and the safety classifiers we'll have to use and we'll have to also leverage the lit uh, tool that they have uh, given so this one i will uh, show a small demo on it we'll do a deeper dive into it it's basically like uh, uh, explainable ai feature of gemma and also they are uh, emphasizing to include guardrails right on the safety classifier and the safeguards as a developer they want us to implement uh, all the time as a responsible ai practice so for example after the input and before it throws the output we have to ensure there are safeguards so how do we ensure uh, they have suggested multiple techniques how can we ensure uh, such an architecture right from uh, the prompt engineering uh, training if we want to customize how do we uh, implement these responsible ai policies and also like filtering out uh, these content so lot many uh, you know guidelines they have given so we will explore on few important things from this so definitely uh, go through this blog for further more information and when you start developing with uh, gemma models so few of the important components of these are the learning interpretability tool so this is basically explainable ai tool so for each of the output if we want to investigate from which part of the input has it actually you uh, know thrown this output so that's one important tool which we will uh, see a uh, you know detailed demo in the end and they're also mentioning about safety classifiers so they have uh, opened uh, two apis one they call as perspective api so this api will filter out contents that are harmful or uh, not aligning with the responsible ai practices right if the output of our model is a harmful or abusive one this perspective ai will filter it out it will provide a scoring through which we can filter it out and it's a free api we can use it and they also have this text moderation service from gemini uh, this is free to certain limit after which we'll have to pay for it uh, this also does the same thing it moderates the output it is generating so these two apis for the safety classifiers they are emphasizing the developers to implement and also uh, during the training phase evaluation phase they are emphasizing more to uh, follow all the responsible practices that they have mentioned so this is one of the important uh, uh, factor of uh, gemma models so we'll do a uh, you know a quick overview on the gemma architecture so gemma architecture follows the same architecture of gemini so they both are having the same architecture but in terms of parameters and the uh, you know at the scale it differs but the base of both uh, gemma and gemini is the transformer architecture but in the transformer it is a decoder only architecture right it takes a sequence and it uh, outputs a set of sequence but on top of this transformer decoder they have added four uh, core components right so i hope uh, on the transformer decoder uh, you you all have a you know a good idea on that so on the transformer they have uh, uh, utilized only the decoded part so these are decoder only models on top of it they have mentioned uh, these four core components so in the original paper right if uh, yeah so this is the original paper uh, from google deep mind they explain about uh, uh, you know the background of llama the comparison that we saw all of those so on the architecture end these are the four components uh, they have mentioned on top of the decoder they're using there are not much information about this in the particular paper they are referring to the uh, external other research papers from which they have got this inspiration so i have tried to include a few of the information uh, regarding these core components so starting with the multi query attention 
so transformer uses multi head attention right we have qk v values uh, like in the self attention we have multiple uh, such self attention layers contributing to the multi head attention similarly they have a concept called multi query attention so there is a concept like we have a queries keys values matrix uh, on training they get updated but in the multi query attention instead of having multiple keys and values they have a single key and single value but the query is uh, multiple so this is the core concept of this uh, multi query attention uh, the 2b model is using this technique not the 7b so since the key value is single not multiple it is leading to a faster inference time right so uh, the inference time is so fast uh, but the 7b model still uses the multi head attention so this is the base uh, idea behind this uh, multi query attention model and they they are also they have mentioned that they are using uh, rope embeddings so embeddings uh, i hope you all have a uh, Uh, idea on that so embeddings is nothing but each and every uh, word we will convert it to vectors to a you know machine understandable form so how are these embeddings uh, created the machine itself uh, learns to create the embeddings for example a particular word will get converted to numbers so we have a huge vectors representing these numbers so each and every word will have a specific embedding so the embeddings will also have implicit meaning within it right so from that uh, we have position embeddings in transformers right so on top of that so position embeddings are basically to also embed the position of the word in the input but here they they are uh, uh, in this paper i have referred so they are mentioning a problem with the long sequences maybe for shorter sequences if we uh, mention the position it is working in a, a expected way but we are when we are looking at a very long sequence the absolute position is not giving better performance but when we include the relative positions of the words right it is uh, giving a better performance so how are they capturing this relative position using a, a rotation matrix right so for example if uh, we have a set of words each and every word along with the position they are passing to a rotation matrix so through this rotation matrix it is uh, giving a embedding which will have both the absolute position uh, uh, information and also the relative position information so by this the longer sequences are also having better uh, performance so from this paper uh, deep mind has inspired uh, this concept and uh, they are using that in gemma models and also the same is being used in gemini also can you repeat this slide once sorry this operations can you repeat it once okay sure so uh, the detailed uh, version of this is actually not uh, given in uh, the original paper of gemma so i have tried to decode this from uh, a different paper specific to this uh, rope embeddings so in transformers uh, we have positional embeddings right along with the usual embedding we also include the position embedding to capture uh, the position of uh, in a sentence so in the position we have absolute position and relative position right so they are trying to capture this also so for example if they consider for longer sequences they are mentioning when they capture relative position it is much more effective so how are they doing it uh, they are mentioning they are having a matrix called rotation matrix they are implementing few mathematical operations on it and they are uh, uh, applying this rotation matrix over the positional encoding so which results in a position encoding uh, uh, embedding which captures both the absolute and relative information so i have also attached uh, this uh, you know uh, source of this paper you can you know do a deeper dive to the uh, formulas in it and the actual implementation of it
so the core of this uh, rope embedding is to capture the relative position as well. All right. So in terms of activation function, uh, so activation function is something like uh, uh, we need to introduce non-linearity into the model, right? So that it can capture non-linear patterns also, uh, like the complex patterns, the non-linear patterns also it will be able to capture so this is a you know a base about this activation function so the activation function this gemma is using is based on a gaussian error linear unit so this is the formula for uh, the gaussian error uh, linear unit by utilizing this particular gaussian error uh, lu they have designed this uh, ggLU activation function to introduce the non-linearity so this is the activation function that uh, Gemma is using. I mean, we are familiar with ReLU, like uh, rectified yeah. linear unit. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and X, uh, probably ALU. So, mm -hmm. uh, so this is one more kind of ALU, OK? Yeah. So Gaussian error linear unit, OK? Yep. So there's a mathematical formula for that. Mm -hmm. uh, for specific activation function. Yeah. Okay, fine. Sure. So also they have given a short note that uh, for normalization, they are using RMS norm. Uh, one thing they are mentioning is the normalization they are applying for both the input layer and also the output layer. They're mentioning usually it is applied only in either of those, but here they have applied in both input and output layer. What normalization function they are using? They are utilizing root mean square uh, normalizer, right? So in activation uh, functions, they are applying this root mean square. So on applying this, uh, they have implemented the normalizing uh, uh, function. So this RMS norm also have mentioned the uh, paper from which I referred. You can refer uh, this particular paper. So these uh, in-depth information they have not mentioned in the original Gemma paper. They have just mentioned that they are utilizing these techniques and they have given reference to the particular paper. So these are the four core components they have added on top of a transformer decoder. On top of decoder, they have added these techniques, uh, which uh, uh, Gemma uses. And they're also mentioning on the core parameters of uh, Gemma architecture. So the context length that they are using is 8192 tokens. And the vocabulary size of uh, this is 256k tokens. They have also mentioned about the number of layers they are using in 2B, 18 layers in 2B, and 28 layers in 7B, and also on the vocabulary size for both and for the more information. And the number of parameters uh, they are using, right? The embedding parameter and the non embedding parameter for 2B and 7B also they have mentioned. So all of these are available in the uh, public white paper from Gemma. So moving on, yeah, we'll focus on the training part of uh, Gemma. So their main focus is not only on the parameters, but mostly on the responsible AI this time, right? Uh, so for each and every step of the training part till the evaluation part, they have implemented strong responsible AI practices. So we'll first try to uh, decode this pre-training part. So to give a base, like what is pre-training? Uh, in pre-training, we will just feed a huge corpus of data from which the model will understand about the nuances in the language and also few many uh, different aspects from the training data. It is not trained for any specific uh, task or the instructions. So if we see in a Gemma 2B version, they have used 2 trillion tokens on the training data set size. And for Gemma 7B, they have used 6 trillion tokens. So what have they used? 
uh, the, the specific data set they have not given, but they are uh, throwing a light that uh, it is it is an English only data. They have focused on English data. The source is from web documents. They have feeded code and also some math uh, documents they have fed. Based upon all these sources, they have trained from the English uh, data set. So this is the source uh, for Gemma. And uh, during the pre-training itself, they are using multiple filtering process. So, for example, uh, we saw that Perspective AI, a free API from uh, Google, right? So, like that, they have multiple uh, methods to filter this unsafe and unwanted content. So, they have a high, uh, you know, evaluation bar for this also. So, any personal information or any sensitive data has been removed from the training uh, data. Both uh, automated uh, evaluation and a manual evaluation, to some extent, they have done. So this is the uh, information about the pre-training with uh, 2 trillion tokens for uh, 2B and 6 trillion tokens for 7B. They have pre-trained the Gemma model on various uh, texts from uh, internet, including math and code. So once this pre-training is done, they are doing instruction fine tuning. So instruction fine tuning is like, so now the model has learned about uh, the nuances in the language and also other uh, uh, information, basic information. Now we are uh, uh, fine tuning it for specific tasks, including question answering, basic reasoning or uh, code, math, summary. So multiple, not just on a specific task, but multiple uh, uh, such tasks, they have uh, curated a data set and they have trained this model. So that we can directly download these and use it for our use. So within the instruction fine tuning, they have two steps. First, starting with the supervised fine tuning. So supervised is like it is a labeled data set, as you all know. So in the labeled data set, uh, uh, not only for the specific uh, you know, uh, instruction they are doing, they also have a responsible AI kind of data set. For example, if I'm asking a wrong way of question, what is the correct way of answering? That level of training also they have done. So they will give scenarios where uh, I'm prompting in a wrong way to this model. What is the specific information the model has to throw? That also they have done. <coughs> So what is the uh, data set they have used to this uh, supervised fine tuning? The exact uh, source they have not given, but they have mentioned it is a text only, English only, uh, both synthetic and human generated data set. And the data set format is something similar to this. It is a prompt, right? So this has only English and uh, uh, text only since it's not a multi-model uh, uh, model. So here, if we look, this is one of the example prompt, example uh, data set they have trained. Uh, so they are also using formatting here. For example, the uh, start of token, end of token, all those things. And uh, um, they are mentioning if it is a user. And for example, in user, uh, you will see the keyword user. And if, had, if it is the turn of the model, they are mentioning models. So all those formatting also they have used. So like a small game, they have uh, uh, you know, created this uh, data set like a prompt and they have fine tuned the um, model. So what is the ex exact output they are uh, expecting after this also they have fed and in a supervised way they have trained. And they also mention it is a LM based side by side evaluation. So this is something like, uh, like for example, uh, I have trained the model. And I'm keeping it as a baseline with a good performance. So after that, if I have a second version, I, I'm having a, a higher large language model again, which will compare if my baseline model is better or this new version model I have created is better. So that uh, superior large language model, they have not mentioned what it is. Probably it would be Gemini, but they are just uh, mentioning it is a superior large language model than Gemma. So this would actually evaluate which is better. Is my baseline better or the new version is better? So that LLM model will uh, act as a judge. And uh, from that, they are choosing the right uh, version. So with this, they are keep on tuning the hyperparameters. 
and with the side by side evaluation with the LLM as a judge, they are choosing the right model. So this is on the supervised fine tuning. And one such example uh, prompt is this one. So after this step, they have used uh, RLHF, which is reinforcement learning uh, with human feedback, which is a super hit uh, method with OpenAI as well. So the same they have used here, but they have mentioned they have used a variant of reinforce. So reinforce is a method in uh, RL, uh, reinforcement learning. So that variant they have used for RLHF along with the human feedback, right? So for this also, they are using uh, LLM as a judge after uh, they have designed a reward model. So step one would be they will have to train a reward model. The data for that would be both a synthetic data and a human generated data. Synthetic data is like uh, the model itself will create some uh, you no know, synthetic data, augmented data. And also with along with the human prompt, uh, they have trained this reward model. And after that, based upon the human feedback, they have continuously uh, retrained with RLHS. So after uh, these two steps, they have released the instruction tuned uh, variants, which we saw the Gemma Instruct uh, 2B and Gemma Instruct 7B. So these are the overall information available in the white paper. All right. Yeah. So coming to the hardware part of it, right? So they are using TPU V5E. So there is a detailed blog from Google itself about this uh, TPU V5E. You can uh, refer to this blog. Uh, but generally, they are mentioning about the chip and uh, they are using pods to uh, you know train these models. And the optimizer uh, information also they have mentioned. So which one they are using? And for 2B, what is the hardware used? For 7B, what is the hardware used? So all those hardware information is also available. For a deeper dive into this specific, so on this TPU v you can refer to this detailed blog uh, covering that. Is there any information they gave on the context size for 2B and 7B? that uh, context size yeah it is 8192 tokens same for both yeah okay and, and the vocabulary the... size is also same for both and uh gemini latest has the two variants what i saw one is the gemini pro and gemini pro vision so is there any idea that you want to say on this like both of these which one is the instruction pro and vision, or maybe it is a separate uh, for pro and vision? Which, which two models are you mentioning? For Gemma, there are two parts, huh. uh, two variants, probably. Yeah. Gemini Pro and Gemini Pro vision. So which one is the instruction one, or is it different? Like, you know, if it is the instruction, then they will specifically say instruction. Is not then maybe the general one. Any idea? Maybe? Okay. Uh, maybe not sure. Your voice is little breaking for me. So you mean within Gemini you're asking, or you're comparing to Gemini? I mean, sorry, within Gemma you're asking, or you're comparing no. with Gemini? Within Gemma. Within Gem. Okay. Yeah. As we saw here, uh, there are four models, four uh, checkpoints that Gemma has. So the first uh, Gemma 2B English and Gemma 7B English falls under pre-trained. And the Gemma Instruct uh, 7B and 2B falls under fine-tuned. So all of these four are text only, right? Yeah, text only, English-based models. Yeah, there is also a vision part, Gemini, uh, Gemma vision part, I guess. Sorry? Vision, the Gemma. Vision, OK, OK. Okay. Yeah, Gemini handles vision, 
but this gemma it handles only text english text for now like uh, we saw here gemini versus gemma gemini handles multi model features like images videos all those but gemma is only for text All right. Okay, we will see on the coding part now. To run 7B, right, uh, uh, we need a 20 GB RAM. But for 2B, we need only 8 GB RAM. 20 GB RAM is not available in usual collab. So if you want to run in, uh, I mean, the 7B version, you would need a collab enterprise version in the collab enterprise we can run uh, 74 fine tuning all of those because the ram size the ram requirement is different for 7b it needs 20 gb so the 2b version uh, it just needs 8 gb ram which we can run in kaggle collab all those right yeah so the general practice is to uh, you know get a uh, consent from this Gemma site. Once that is done, we can access uh, the models. The other way is also possible, but the recommended way from Google is we'll have to go to the site, uh, agree to their terms, and then start using it responsibly. So we'll see a uh, you know quick demo on the base variant. Yeah. So here, what I have done uh, to mention, Gemma is available uh, in multiple uh, environment, and the easy way I'm using is the Keras NLP. It is also available in Hugging Face, right? Uh, so they have a model card on the Gemma, and just in the usual way, we can download uh, Gemma models and use it. It's very simple. We can even run uh, in a CPU with uh, 2B, but the RAM size requirement, uh, we should keep a note of it. So I'm using Keras NLP uh, version with uh, Gemma. From Keras NLP, I'm going to uh, install and use it. So initially, I'm doing the basic setup. I'm, I'm going to access the API. So I'm, I have given my Kaggle username and Kaggle key. So here, uh, for privacy reasons, I have not mentioned. If you want to do the same way, you can give your secret key here. In Collab, there is a feature called Secrets. Here, you can set up your Kaggle username and Kaggle key from which it will uh, take it. So I'm just doing the basic setup for uh, the credentials. And I'm installing Keras NLP. Yeah. So after uh, importing the basic packages, now I'm going to create this model for uh, Gemma. So since this is a basic collab, I have connected for uh, a GPU, and my RAM is uh, low, less only. So this is a basic collab version. So from the Keras NLP, from the models available, I'm uh, uh, using the Gemma Causal LM. LLM from which I'm downloading this Gemma 2B EL. So this is the basic pre-trained version. This is not an instruct, instruction tuned version. This basic version I'm just uh, importing. So from this, we can also see a summary, summary of this 2B. The same things uh, that we saw, the number of parameters, the token embeddings, all those basic summaries like the vocabulary, uh, tokenizer, all those we can see. If this is just for the information. So the main thing is we want to generate text out of it, right? So we have the Gemma model loaded here. And using this generate function, uh, I'm just passing a prompt. 
right so my prompt is what is the meaning of life and the maximum length i'm setting as 64 so this is the output that it has generated And even with the pre-trained version, it's much more meaningful, right? Uh, for what is the meaning of life? It's predicting and generating in the right way. So likewise, you can play around with the uh, you know parameters and the hyperparameters they have. You can change the sampling. For example, instead of greedy uh, sampling technique, I have uh, used the top K sampling. So likewise, all the parameters, the maximum length, you can change and play around. So the, res the responses would have a slight variation depending upon the tuning. Uh, the responses would differ. So they have that flexibility also. So if you do not want to you know, uh, go through the coding way, you just want to explore uh, the models, there is an inference uh, tool available in Kaggle. Um, so in Kaggle, if you just search for Gemma, you will get, you will get this uh, page. So where you can choose which uh, model you want to try. Let's try the... Instruct 7B model, the outperforming model, and then you can just uh, give your prompt. So, so this. So yeah. how can an identity instead of things are usable identities? So we need to address uh, this, uh, the problems because of this kind of reusable identifiers as part of the historical research research system and confirmation. So you can be. Uh, are available today, but if I get any time in the next moment, and bonus can change. It's not that change the money, the correct time, what happened yesterday, what was the last week, and things like this. Uh, so let's put the slides uh, very fast. We have two more slides. So, what we have done here is present a event system, uh, which will take care of pushing the events as and when the things are happening. Can your voice is breaking? Yeah, up. yeah. I can't understand. Also. You can't understand what you are asking, Kiran. Maybe you can write your question in chat. Yeah. I don't think he was asking. I think he was discussing with someone else by mistake. He unmuted. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. So, as I mentioned, the coding is also very simple. We just have to import the libraries and generate. If uh, for no code, if you just want to explore around, right, uh, you can choose the model and you can, uh, you know, give a prompt. They also have some recommendations, like give me a workout for beginners. It will generate this. So as we saw, it is uh, it has outperformed uh, most of the other LLMs. So the results are also really nice. So this is one easy way to try it. As developers, uh, uh, we can use the hugging phase uh, um, code and also the Keras NLP code. And in Kaggle also, the Google has released a lot of uh, example codes. So there are a lot of uh, you know sample notebooks already available from Google. We can uh, leverage those notebooks as well. So this uh, is a way. Share the notebook which you just showed. Will be possible to share that? Yeah, yeah, sure. We'll share. Thanks. Sure. Yeah. So this is a very basic uh, implementation. Just we imported and uh, generated a sample thing. So we will see if we can fine tune these models, right? Uh, yeah. So this is a notebook from Google itself. Uh, they have multiple such notebooks. There are a lot of examples. If you go to GitHub and GCP platform with Vertex AI, within Vertex AI, they have a uh, lot of uh, examples uh, worth trying it out. So we'll focus on this fine tuning part.
yeah so as i mentioned uh, this is uh, using vertex ai but uh, you can use any uh, platform you're comfortable with uh, with the setup uh, for that specific platform so we'll just uh, look upon the uh, no required things not focusing on vertex ai here so fine tuning uh, to give a note on it for if uh, we want the model to to be uh, uh, performing better for our specific custom data or our specific custom use case we will do a model fine tuning for our use case and for our data so taking these base models we will see how we can fine tune these models for the data and the use case that we have so the same keras nlp uh, we'll have to download and the sentence piece tokenizer transformers hugging face uh, libraries the basic setup we'll have to do right the uh, installing these libraries importing we'll do and then uh, we'll also we will be using the model apis from kaggle like how we did here we'll have to set up the uh, secret key for kaggle username keys we'll have to do the same thing uh, here the kaggle setup we'll have to do and whichever platform you're using here it is vertex ai from gcp so the gcp setup all those uh, we'll just have to do after that uh, we'll have to import the libraries required including keras nlp and the tokenizer and hugging face library transformers and then here uh, we are taking a pre-trained model not the instruction tune model right because pre trained model it is so basic it has just learned uh, the basic information about the training data about the language so we are taking this to make it more customizable to our data set right so what is the data set uh, we are taking it is a databricks uh, uh, library i mean sorry databricks uh, training data set so this is a data set where uh, this uh, employees from databricks right they have uh, uh, curated this human made prompts so they, they all these are uh, developed by humans not a synthetic data so it contains like the basic what is the context and what is the instruction given like the question and what should be the response if you notice uh, it's not specific to a particular task it has classification open question answering closed question answering information retrieval like extraction and uh, complex tasks like uh, brainstorming all such multiple uh, different tasks the human generated uh, data set is available they also have training set test set so this particular open source uh, data set they are taking right so by taking this data set we are going to fine tune this pre trained uh, model yeah very interesting because databricks has the data set for for their own llm which is called dolly 2 uh -huh. so databricks has made the data set public yeah it's open source yep it's a nice one yeah so taking this data set we are loading it and there are a few uh, techniques for fine tuning uh, there is a half precision uh, uh, technique like instead of uh, having a heavy load we will utilize this half precision uh, version float 16 uh, this is a common technique for fine tuning and also like we saw the summary of this model uh, you can also find the summary for this the total number of trainable parameters if you take a closer look uh, it's so huge right it's around 4 gb and how much it's uh, it's such a huge uh, parameter uh, that needs to be trained so it is really difficult to train such huge parameters but there are many efficient ways for it so one such efficient way is uh, the parameter efficient tuning right one of the technique is lora the so lora is a famous uh, technique to um, fine tune these models for low rank adaptation so which we'll be using here right so in lora if you uh, compare 
So Laura, you can uh, do a deeper dig. It's 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 nothing like instead of uh, taking the whole parameters that a model has, only by choosing a few parameters also we can achieve the same performance. So if you see here, the total parameters to be trained earlier was around 4 GB, but now um, it has reduced so much, right? Only in MBs. So the reduction is around 1,800 times. This is not specific to Gemma. It's a general technique available for all LLMs. So that same LoRa technique, uh, we are also uh, leveraging that for Gemma models. So before this, the same. Uh, so let's see what was the result without fine tuning, right? So without uh, me doing anything, if we just take the same pre-trained model, which is Gemma uh, to 7B English, if I ask these questions, let's see what are all the responses. Antrika, any idea about this quantization or like uh, the one bit LMM, which is becoming now famous, the quantization is also a way of reducing the model training size, right? Model yeah, yeah. And second thing is one bit LMM recently became whatever mm -hmm. the Microsoft had launched. Any uh -huh. points on that? What was second one? What okay, that one I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that paper Vishal came like three, four days back. So yeah, yeah. It's really LLM is a brand new stuff. It came, I think, uh, last week. So Correct. we have in fact we have a webinar on that as well lined up later this month. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, yeah, the quantization uh, methods will also definitely help. The B uh, float 16 uh, we have used, right? That uh, should also be helpful. The precision, the quantization, whichever, uh, uh, you know, on top of LoRa, there are a lot many uh, newer uh, techniques. We can implement those as well. So uh, if we take without any fine tuning, let's compare the results. For example, uh, let's see this question from the uh, testing they're doing. So if I ask what are good activities for a toddler, if you compare the result right, it is just a simple generation. It is just keep on repeating what are the best activities for a toddler uh, four times. This is the expected behavior of the model. It, its core uh, thing is to keep on uh, generating based upon its learning, right? So this is how the pre-trained model will be. But we want this model to be fine-tuned for this data set. If I ask a question, looking at the context, it has to give me the expected uh, response. Right? This particular behavior we are expecting. So let's see how from this response we can convert to the expected uh, intelligent responses. So that's where. Uh, this LoRa quantization, all those techniques uh, comes in. We are using the basic version uh, LoRa technique. We have uh, libraries for that. Just we'll have to enable the LoRa. And as I mentioned, after uh, we enable this uh, LoRa adaptation, the number of trainable parameters has reduced uh, 1,800 times. So the fine tuning becomes uh, much easier now. And the usual process, we'll have to mention uh, the models and the parameters, the learning rate, all those uh, we'll mention. You can even enhance this. Uh, you can even use ad advanced uh, techniques here. So the basic uh, uh, parameters we have initialized and uh, we are fine tuning it. So after the fine tuning, let's compare the results. So the same question, uh, what are uh, good activities for a toddler? Earlier, it was just the question was getting uh, repeated. After this uh, fine tuning, the response is the best activities are those that are fun and engaging. Right. So this is what is all about uh, fine, fine tuning the pre-trained version. So the pre-trained version would be a very base uh, text generation model. Whatever specific task that we are looking to, whatever specific data set that we have, we can fine tune those easily using these techniques.
So if we compare for other uh, questions also, the responses are uh, more like a question answering. So this is on fine tuning uh, Gemma. And we have one important uh, uh, you know, emphasis from Google, which is the LIP models. So both this uh, uh, base version and the fine tuning version, I have included the link. I will uh, share with Vivek. You can refer those later. So similar to this, they have many compli complex uh, fine tuning and complex uh, use cases. Notebooks also available here. You can find those. So let's uh, do a uh, dive into this LIT, which is an interesting one also. So since Gemma is focusing more on responsible AI and it's expecting the developers and researchers to always practice uh, responsible AI policies, they have uh, uh, leveraged this uh, LIT tool, which is learning interpretability tool. This is not from uh, uh, like Google or Gemma. It's an open source tool available. So like for uh, you know tabular uh, models, we have this uh, explainable AI features, right? We have model interpretability. The same way we have for NLP models also. Like we can see uh, why the NLP model is giving such an output, which part of the input is influencing my output. So all those interpretations we can do. So in uh, LIT, we, they have a lot of uh, different methods implemented, a lot of uh, APIs available. This is really an interesting tool for NLP models. Uh, the specific uh, thing which they are suggesting for Gemma is this salience map, right? So uh, using the salience map, uh, they have implemented this model interpretability for uh, Gemma. We will uh, do a deeper uh, dive into that. So this LIT model, you can, uh, this particular tool, you can use for other NLP models also. It's a really interesting one. We have a lot of tutorials on that. So they also have a code lab. If you want to try it out for your own uh, model, I mean, your own fine tune model, you can load those and try it out. So they have step-by-step -step implementation, like how to do it. So I, I'll throw a uh, no, um, light on the salience method. So salience is, uh, is like the explainable AI technique. So uh, here we are focusing on sequence salience. Sequence salience is for the sequence to sequence uh, methods, right? The sequence to sequence is like from a set of uh, tokens. The output will also be a set of tokens, which is a sequence. So if my output is three words, if I'm choosing a word number two, I can track from which part of the input I'm getting this output. It will assign a scoring method for each and every words in my input, showing the magnitude and the influence it has on the output word, right? Like very similar to the attention mechanism, we are using the same for the interpretation. It will give a score, it will give a magnitude of the influence of the input word to the output uh, sequence. So to implement this, uh, they have complex methods like uh, SHAP and LIM. But they have a very cost effective and a simple efficient method using gradient uh, uh, techniques called GRAD uh, L2 norm. So basically, it will be using the gradient uh, methods to analyze uh, the magnitude. So the uh, magnitude scoring it will do, and it is a simple and efficient one. So we also have these complex uh, explainable AI techniques, but this is uh, good enough is what they have mentioned. So we will also be using the sequence salience and the grad to grad L2 norm method here, right? So all these uh, required things like uh, the Keras NLP and uh, the LIT tool, right? LIT NLP and Keras NLP we can uh, install. And we are taking the instruct uh, to be version here. So our goal is to predict uh, like we want the tool to explain how it has uh, come up with that output. What is actually influencing the output factors? That is the goal. 
So for that, the basic setup we are doing with the Keras and the LIT, we have chosen this uh, Gemma Instruct to be English model. And then we are loading it with the LIT models and the Keras model. We are linking both with the LIT uh, model. We are linking this Gemma. And then uh, for the data sets, they have multiple uh, suggested data sets. But for this particular, we are taking LM data set. LM data set is like, uh, we will see what it is. I, I will show you. It is like a set of uh, prompt. Uh, some will be a right prompt. Some will be, uh, you know, wantedly uh, created wrong prompts, uh, which we can use for our ex exploration. So this particular data set, let's try to explore the data set first. Yeah, so this is the data set. So these are a lot of prompts. For example, this is about uh, uh, the restaurant uh, menu. For example, I'm giving uh, what is my uh, taste like. I have a sweet tooth, but I do not like onions or garlic. So the suggested uh, recipe in the menu is onion soup. The analysis it has to do is it has cooked onions in it, which you don't like. And the recommendation should be try to avoid it, right? But wantedly, they have given a wrong answer. You have to try it. Yeah. So likewise, we have uh, good prompts and wrong prompts also. We will like maybe with uh, these number of small prompt, it is easy to identify that. But with a higher scale, we can't even, uh, you know, we manually identify such wrong prompts. Right. So is there a way to uh, try like interpret interpret this and is there a way for explainable AI for NLP models is what we will explore now. So after the basic setup, after all those, right, we will try uh, to see what's happening uh, behind. So this is uh, the few short prompt uh, we have given. So for now, we have taken uh, these prompts. And this is the new input that I'm giving. So my like is cheese, but I dislike egg. And this is a, a French recipe, which has both cheese and egg. So what would be the output is what we are going to see. But we have a wrong prompt in it, right? So this is a wrong result. Let's see how the model behaves now. This is the LIT tool. As I mentioned, the sequence salience will give a magnitude score for the input sequences. Right. So these are the uh, uh, few short prompt inputs that I gave. And the one you see below is the new uh, input that I'm giving. So the new input I gave was cheese and the dislike was egg. And in the suggestion, uh, it's a, a new recipe which has both cheese and egg. What was the output is you might not like it, but it's worth trying. Even though I don't like X, it is uh, telling me it is really worth of trying it. So this is not the output that I'm expecting for, right? So let's try to debug why it is telling me uh, such a thing. So we are using uh, color uh, gradient here. Higher the color magnitude is the more influence it has on the input. So if you look at it, the highest magnitude lies here. Analyze the menu. So the prompt it is following. And also it is following that it has cooked onions in it, which you don't like. This also it is uh, taking as the highest consideration. And if we see the next magnitudes are into the cheese and eggs, onion, garlic. So based on this, from its past experience, it has learned, even though they don't like it, you have to try it, right? So the same behavior it has uh, replicated here. Even though they can't eat eggs, it is uh, suggesting, but it's worth trying, right? So where is this useful? Maybe you, we might be having an abusive uh, prompt, abusive comment, for example, in a movie, uh, a comment, uh, right? Sentiment analysis. We might be having a very abusive comment. 
if the model is uh, giving a, a hate speech this will be helpful for us to backtrack so it will give uh, from which input that we gave from which uh, part of it it has actually predicting it so what will be my uh, natural uh, next step i'll have to edit my prompt i'll have to change my input accordingly let's try that let's see if i change uh, what will be the magnitude what will be the effect we'll see that so in the next i have changed my uh, input so in the input prompt in the example, I have changed my recommendation as avoid. Since they don't like onion and the suggestion is onion soup, my recommendation is just avoid it. So let's see what is the output now. So for my new input with cheese and eggs, and I cannot eat uh, eggs, the output is not suitable for you. Let's see what was the input uh, uh, that made this change, right? Which was actually influencing this. If you see the maximum magnitude lies in uh, these two areas. Analyze the menu. And with this, uh, we have mentioned, uh, you should also consider the suitability for someone with a dietary restriction. So with this specific prompt, it has the highest influence on this output. So likewise, we can keep on experiment. Uh, we, we need to uh, you know, implement these for more responsible AI practices. If uh, the output is biased towards a community, it is not fair towards a community, or any other unfair practices, right? we can always trace back from where it is actually doing it to the NLP models. And we can change our input accordingly. We can change the prompt also accordingly. So this is one of the uh, technique that Google is suggesting to use LIT tool to analyze Gemma models. So this is uh, so this link also I have included here. So I I hope uh, this was clear. Like how we do explainable AI for uh, other models, we have for NLP models also. So Google has emphasized this to. Uh, uh, you know, adopt responsible AI practices. So, yeah, I'm done with the presentation. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, okay, nice job, uh, Chandika. So, uh, audience, uh, uh, any other questions? There's one question here on the chat. Responsible AI principles are imbibed during training itself, or guardrails help us realize this post inference? Okay. Yeah. So starting from so from Google and starting from the data collection, training, evaluation, in all the steps, they have highly emphasized responsible AI practices. They are filtering out a lot of uh, uh, you know abusive or any unsafe content after they have released as an open model right from our end also they are emphasizing to implement guardrails as a developer's uh, responsibility so how do we implement those they have given a very detailed uh, guide for that like few examples is to include perspective AI api which is a safety classifier it will classify out any unwanted content a uh, paid and free version they have so similar to this they have a lot of suggestions in this toolkit we can refer to that and implement the guardrails accordingly. Okay, uh, good. Any other questions, folks? Okay, so thanks a lot, uh, uh, Chandika. Excellent presentation. Thank you, audience, yeah. for on this Saturday. Uh, indeed, fantastic. Sim. Good comments are coming. I echo that. Sure. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Vivek. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thanks, Chandika.